Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on how to use the Onshape CAD program to design and assemble a robot for VEX V5 robotics competitions. For this tutorial, I will be using the VEX V5 parts library made by Felix Deng. There are several other parts libraries that are available, but for the purposes of the tutorial, this is the one that I will be using. Once you create your account, you'll be able to see your documents. I already have a few things in here, but it will probably still be empty for you. Click on the create button and create a new document. You can also create a folder to help organize documents. When you create a new document, there will always be two tabs, an assembly and a part studio. For our purposes, we can just delete the part studio, as we won't be using it. If you install the VEX parts library extension correctly, there should be a button on the right of your screen which pulls up the parts library. In this tutorial, I will be walking through creating a simple gear train. Let's start by adding a 1x2x1c channel. You can find a part either by browsing through these categories or by searching for its name. Many parts will have properties and attributes that you can edit. Since we want a 1x2x1c channel, we'll select the aluminum 1x2x1 for its type, and set its length to 10 inches. This library does have a small quirk where selecting one option from the attributes dropdown causes all the other options to disappear. If you make a mistake like this, hit reset and all the other options will come back. You can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. To look around the model, you can either hold down right click and drag, or click on the faces and corners of the view cube in the corner. To pan, hold down scroll click and drag. Let's enter the C channel in our screen to get a better look at it. Click on the C channel. You can move it around the assembly with these straight arrows and rotate it with these curved arrows on all three axes. You can also type in specific distances and angles for more precise adjustments. Since we're going to be making a simple gear train, let's add some flat bearings. This library includes normal flat bearings as well as flat bearings with preset screws. We're going to add one normal flat bearing and two with preset screws. We're going to select the default screw positioning and flip screw orientation. To connect these parts, we're going to be using the mate function. Open the mate menu either by clicking on the button or by pressing M. With this function, the first part you select will be the part that gets moved onto the second part. Let's start with the regular flat bearing. Rotate around the bearing so that you can see the face that you want to get connected. Hover over the face, hold shift, and select the point in the middle of the hole. You should see the part in the mate function menu, and the face will be highlighted. Move the camera back to the C channel. Select the hole that you want the bearing to connect to, and once again, hover over the face, hold shift, and select the point in the middle of the hole. If the parts don't connect in the way that you want, you can use these two buttons to flip the primary and secondary axes until it's correct. You can also change either surface you want to mate by clicking on the X to remove a point and replace it with another. Once you're done, click on the green check mark. Then, click on the red X to exit the mate menu. If you want to change a previous mate, find the mate feature in the instance tree, double click on the mate feature you want to change, and you can make edits from here. We can use the same process to connect two flat bearings with screws onto the C channel. There will be a small gap between the bearings and the screws or nuts, which the metal should fill up. Let's also add a motor to our assembly. Note that the surface of the motor you want to use the mate feature on is the outer plastic section here, not the gold section. I'll also add and mate two 5 8 inch screws to the bearings to represent a proper connection between the motor and the C channel. When mating screws, select the surface under the screw head. Before we continue, let's add three 4-inch low-strength shafts. Mate two of them with the flat bearings without the motor, and flip its primary axis so that the shaft isn't going through the bearing. 
In the mate menu, select the offset option. This will let you offset a connection by shifting or rotating it in all three axes. With these shafts, we are going to offset them on the Z axis by 1 inch. You can offset parts in the other direction by typing in a negative number. With the third shaft, we want to mate it with the motor, but there are other parts in the way. We can get around this by right clicking on the motor and selecting isolate. This will ghost every other part of the assembly, allowing you to access the inside of the motor. For our two gears, we're going to be using assemblies to help streamline and organize our file. Click on the plus sign in the bottom right and select create assembly. You can right click on the assembly tab to rename it. Use the parts library to add a 60 tooth V2 high strength gear and two high strength shaft inserts. Made the two inserts with the center of the gear as shown. Add a half inch spacer and a shaft collar and mate them to each side of the gear on top of the inserts. Go back to the first assembly. In the top left corner, click on Insert. Under the Current Document tab, switch over to Assemblies and you should see the gear assembly that we just made. Click on it three times to insert three of those assemblies and then click on the check mark. Now we can make three gear assemblies to the flat bearings. You can press the solve button to move the rest of the parts over or just confirm the mate. Optionally, you can offset the gears by 3 degrees in the Z axis to make the teeth mesh more realistically. To finish this walkthrough, let's add one more assembly to this document. Insert two copies of the gear train assembly, along with another 10 inch 1x2x1C channel from the parts library. Select one of the gear train assemblies and rotate it 180 degrees so that the motors are facing into each other. Mate the C channel to the top of the gear train so that it spans behind the motor, and mate the second gear train to that C channel. If you want, you can add screws and nuts to this, but I will sometimes skip those for the sake of time. Using assemblies and sub-assemblies like this allows for your designs to be much more streamlined and modular. For example, our drivetrain's CAD this year consists of two assemblies, which are then subdivided even further into our braces, motor mounts, and wheels. There are a few more specific features in this particular parts library, such as chains, and other on-shape features such as the section view, setting transparency, showing and hiding in all mate features, and other features which could come in handy, but this just about wraps up the basics for using Onshape to design a robot. If you have any questions or would like a tutorial on any other features in Onshape, feel free to leave them in the comments. I hope this video was helpful.